Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. I thought I'd do a, another video for you because I don't know when I'll be back. I'm hoping to be back um, pretty soon, but I don't know, just in terms of like, where I, if I can have my laptop like sat in, <laughs> sat in the right place, okay? So I thought I would do a quick little video for you guys um, that are struggling with CPU. Um, CPU seems to be one of the biggest issues um, when it comes to a lot of people working in the box. I have an i5 Lenovo laptop, genuinely I do, right? And um, I mix with Acoustica Audio, Plugin Alliance, Slate, Noise Ash, Arcturia, like all these waves as well. Again, I use all these plugins in a mix, but especially Acoustica Audio, a lot of people complain about um, CPU with Acoustica Audio. Now, it's not ideal, but I'm going to basically show you, like through my second single, which I'm, I'm basically 95% finished, so I'm going to actually let you hear it. I'm going to show you. Um, the way that I've got that set up and how I utilise freezing. Okay, so you've got freezing commit and freezing commit is something that if you've never heard before, this is going to be a great video for you. If you don't have the money to invest in a higher performing laptop, freeze and commit could be one of the biggest things for you. And I'm going to show you how I kind of, my kind of workflow and Pro Tools and how I'm able to do my second single with 12 um, Acoustica Audio plugins um, plugin Alliance, Wave, Slate, blah, blah, blah. All of these plugins, loads of reverbs and delays as well. I get Abbey Road Chambers, right, <laughs> from Waves. That's high CPU, okay? So let's get straight into it. freezing. Let's do it. What is freezing, right? Freezing is basically a technique, right, that you can use to basically render the audio for a certain amount of time, right? That's basically what it does, it renders the audio. But the good thing of what Pro Tools does is that Pro Tools allows you to freeze, right, so render up to a certain insert. So what you'll kind of see with my vocals is that like I've got all these plugins going, right, and they're quite high kind of CPU, especially the acoustical ones. So what I'll do is I'll mix to like a point where I'm starting, like, starting to get a little bit buggy, and as soon as it starts getting a little bit buggy, I'll just right click and I'll just say, right, freeze up to insert, right? So, say I've got it sounding the way I like it and I want to maybe add another acoustic audio plugin. Say like, I like to add water after a lot of plugins to add that kind of analog 3D character that I like. But again, it's going to take a lot of CPU, especially in an i5 laptop. So all I'll do is I'll freeze it, say I'll freeze it up to the magenta, and then that way it kind of renders it. Okay, and it might, be, it might maybe take 30, 40 seconds, but when you go to unfreeze it, Honestly, freeze, unfreezing takes like okay, five seconds. It's dead, dead quick. So you freeze up to the, the insert and then you could start then adding on the um, water stuff. Freeze that. If I want to add another plugin on top of that, I can keep on doing that plugin by plugin by plugin. Freeze up to this insert. Freeze up to this insert. And then if you get to a certain point where you're like, no, this, I'm kind of settled. That's like the way I want it. I'm not going to go back to this. So that's fine. Just commit it. So what I'll do is I'll commit it. I'll basically record that, render it, record it to a new track. And then what I'll do is I'll then hide and make an active the original track, but you've still got it in your left-hand side. Now, the really good thing what I do in terms of workflow is I use the Pro Tools folders, right? So you have Pro Tools folders. Pro Tools folders are track folders are great because what you can do is basically you can kind of, so instead of like all your mix um, line kind of just being really kind of cluttered, you can stick them on track folders. So you can see all your guitar stems in a guitar folder and you just click into it and doosh, it comes out and then you can expand it and then kind of hide it again, okay? It's simple as that. But what you can also do is say like when you've committed something, right? What you could then do is the original, you could then stick it in a folder. So if say if you've committed it and you go, ah, it's just not working, I want to go back to the original, that's fine. You've got it in a simple folder that's not cluttering up um, your mix rack and you just go, think, expand it, right? There's the original, right? Unfreeze it, because it'll still be frozen. Unfreeze it, make a few adjustments, freeze, freeze, freeze job done. You can commit it, or again, you can delete that and then just use the freezed one, right? You've got kind of different options to you. Yes, it is a bit of a hassle, but I'm going to tell you one thing right now. It's much, much, much better than oh, CPU, CPU, RAM, RAM, kind of like getting these errors and it stopping and buffering and stuff. It's, a, it, it, it's not creative for you. It's not good for your mixing. So you know what you do? You just say, right, okay, it's going to take me maybe 20 seconds to freeze it. And again, the higher the CPU, that plug in, the longer it's going to take to freeze. So it's a thing where it's like when you're rendering that and you freeze up to say a certain insert or you freeze the whole thing on that bus, it maybe might take 40 seconds to a minute. 
It just depends. It just depends. But for me, it's just all about patience, right? For me, I'd much rather wait 40 seconds, cuddle on your phone, you can do whatever you need to do, and then it's frozen, and then you could go and work seamlessly without stuff crashing and CPU issues. And basically, to me, using this technique, right, when you get into the workflow of it, you're kind of limitless. You can use as many plugins as you want. So see the reverbs and stuff? I just commit them or I freeze them, right? That's what I do. Think about this, right? If you've got the reverb the way you like it, right? Just fucking freeze it and then you can just bring it up, bring the fader up to as much reverb as you want. So for example, in the track, I've got vocal reverbs, I've got guitar reverbs, right? Sometimes I'll just commit them or freeze them. I know the reverb sound that I want. Just freeze it, right? You've got it sent to the send. It's frozen it and you're just bringing the fader up to how much reverb or delay you want. It's so limitless, right? And people can call it a pain in the backside, right? But just have a bit of organisation, right? And a bit of workflow. Use the track folders if you want. Again, Pro Tools is really cool because on the left-hand side, you, you can see which ones are active and which ones are inactive. Click it, make it active, right? Job done, right? It's a pain in the hoop, I understand. But it means that you're not worrying, right? I can have as much acoustical audio as I want. Where, where it can be a bit of an issue, still, okay? So if obviously the stuff's on your mix bus, right? If you freeze what's on your mix bus, Everything else before that, doesn't matter what you change, it's rendered, right? You've rendered everything going into that. So if you render your mix bus, that's anything. So if you go back into the vocals and try and change stuff, it's not going to do anything because it's frozen, right? That's the way that it works. So obviously you can't freeze your mix bus. That's the only kind of limitation to it is you can't freeze your mix bus, your print bus, right? Um, because obviously if you freeze one insert on, that's going to freeze everything else going into it, right? So that's just the way it works. Hopefully it's been helpful for you, right? If it's a bit of a hassle for you, fair enough, right? But <laughs> cost it, laptops don't come cheap, okay? Um, and if you're kind of struggling, then hopefully your DAW has a freeze um, and it has like or a commit, right? It has one of the two, right? Um, if you've got Pro Tools and you're not in the track folders, get in the track folders. Track folders is kind of like um, part of the news, like the 2020 Pro Tools, okay? So just kind of be aware that the track folders came out relatively um, recently, okay? So just remember, right? Just because you've got a low-performing laptop doesn't mean that you're going to be scuppered with CPU. There are ways around it. It just it's all about workflow. So CPU is it an issue? No, it's not a C it's not an issue anymore. It's not an issue for me anymore. Um, is it a little bit annoying? Yeah, it is a little bit annoying. But guess what? Right, get into the habit, find your own workflow, and guess what? You can use as much acoustical audio, as much reverbs. You can use as anything you bloody want. Anything you bloody want, right? Just be a little bit careful on the mix bus. Right? Just, just, just remember that that's really the one thing that you can't really freeze, right? You, you freeze that at the very, very end, right? Maybe if you do a bit of mastering or whatever, you maybe want to like try a little bit of mastering at the end. Yes, freeze the mix bus, okay? Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of the best tip I can give you. CPU, it's only an issue if you let it be an issue in these modern days, okay? So guys, thank you very much. I don't know if I'll be back Wednesday. I don't know. Hopefully I'm back. We'll see how my hernia. Um, recovery goes and again if this has been helpful for you please like and subscribe as well and i'll see you when i see you okay as more as more but does that sims i'll see you when i see you okay thanks guys